plant-based Italian fare in San Francisco. Cheat day meal for me, a lot of carbs. Brews with a view in Vallejo. It's a sandwich that's after my own heart. And Mediterranean small plates in Oakland. The fries are like rock stars. Just ahead on Check, Please! Bay Area. So is there anything else I should know before we get up close to the bees? Um, don't get stung. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check, Please! table today are content producer Mark Snyder, nonprofit analyst Thomas Brungard, and health tech educator Deb Levine. Welcome, everyone. You ready? We're ready. Thank so you. ready. Okay. Mark starts us off. He's an Italian food fan with a huge dilemma. How to satisfy his cravings for handmade pastas and pizzas while maintaining a strictly pescatarian diet. Hmm. Luckily, he thinks he's found a solution. An innovative Italian eatery offering all his favorites, minus the meat. Located in San Francisco's Hayes Valley, it's Baia. restaurant name is Baia. It means bay in Italian, so it's after San Francisco Bay. That's the spirit of it. We're vegan Italian. Fruits, vegetables, the Italian way is really letting them speak for themselves. We hand roll all of our pastas daily, except for the gluten-free. And then the meatballs are just how grandma used to make, only they're plant-based. People can't believe sometimes that this is vegan food. And they are realizing that they can get the same flavors and they feel better about themselves, that they're eating healthier. At the corner of Grove and Franklin, this is a venerable spot. Long time San Francisco diners remember this as being the spot where Jardinero was for 20 some odd years. We recognize that people have been coming in this building for many years and it's important for them to still feel that vibe and that connection. The bar is the focal point of the restaurant. We have a great by the glass program as well as a nice Italian program. And then upstairs, we set up 10 tables of two so that there's kind of a date night feel. But at the same time, it can be a family style restaurant too. I think the food is tremendous. Often, we'll get someone who's not a vegan, never considered eating vegan food, and they leave thinking, wow, that was great. Now, Mark, Baia is uh, pretty special and unique, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've been pescatarian or vegetarian for about 25 years, and I feel really excited Since about... Since birth, the, basically. Right? <laughs> Since I was 15. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about the explosion of vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian, plant-based, friendly restaurants happening now. I think it's a really good trend that we need to keep supporting. So I love this restaurant. It's kind of a little bit upscale. It's not mm -hmm. bunny food, though. It's right. Com it's comfort right. food. I love the meatballs. I don't really remember if they taste like real meat because it's been so long since I've had real meat. Right. But they are perfectly spicy and seasoned, and they're on top of polenta. They've got a nice juicy texture, okay. and it has like a shaved Parmesan on top. Again, the, the cheese is vegan too, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't know it. We tried the meatballs, and they do taste like meat. Um, the texture is a little there bit... There you go. Okay. The te texture is a little <laughs> bit different, um, but it was still very good. The polenta, I thought, was a little under-seasoned. It, it did pair well with the meatballs, but I thought it could have been a little bit more seasoned. But we did enjoy the meatballs as a group. We all tried at least one meatball. I love the starters, um, and, I, and I very much enjoyed the dishes that were made with a lot of vegetables. So okay. there was a cauliflower with lemon butter, in quotes, and sprinkled with parsley. Yeah. It was like cooked perfectly, perfect crunch. And then also this beautiful sunshine dish that had sunchokes two ways, eggplant, a beet puree, absolutely delicious. Any favorite dishes? I think everybody loves their pizzas on the edge. They're crispy and then they've got the chewier center, which is really perfect. It's not going to be like your floppy New York style pizza. Right. It's a little elevated and... Uh, hey, don't beat up on New York style. I, like, <laughs> I do like a dollar slice. I like a dollar slice. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Especially okay, after New a few York cocktails. Here, come on. 
tread lightly. Uh, <laughs> I had the spicy sausage this time, but mm -hmm. you can't go wrong also with more of their vegetable-based toppings as well. I think that's always a, a hit. We tried two of the pizzas. Okay. One was very good, the mushroom fungi pizza. Mm -hmm. We thought that was great. The group agreed it had kind of an Asian flavor to it, mm, which was unexpected yeah. but very good. The other pizza was a chicken pesto pizza, which was just a real swing and a miss. I, I felt like, I think it spent too much time in the oven, so it was a bit burnt. It was very chewy. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been more effective just having vegetables on it rather than mm -hmm. the fake chicken. All right, pastas. The pastas are great, homemade flavors. I had a pappardelle pasta, and it was al dente, it had a buttery sauce in there, a little bit of spice, like an herbal flavor to the buttery sauce, and it had some broccolini on top. Really delicious. Again, very comforting, kind of a cheat day meal for me, a lot of carbs. <laughs> we tried the mushroom ravioli, mm -hmm. um, and I thought it had a really great sauce. It was like a marsala sauce, and the ravioli was cooked really well. The sauce was so good, we took the pizza and we were dipping it in the sauce. So I would go back for that ravioli. Okay. For the pasta, we had the rigatoni arrabbiata and it's delicious. The pasta was cooked al dente, mm -hmm. so really nice and lovely, as you described. Spicy tomato sauce, really nice. Had a little too much of the alt cheese for my tastes. Um, I would next time maybe ask for that on the side. And did you have anything to drink? I had a gin forward cocktail that was uh, Earl Grey tea infused. I like tea based cocktails, I guess it's kind of trendy, but super delicious cocktail. And they changed their cocktail menu up just like they changed their seasonal offerings on the regular menu. Mm -hmm. But I felt like as somebody who doesn't drink, yeah. it was hard for me to find something. Did they have anything non-alcoholic? They had a Did Baya you? lemonade, okay. which I think is a lemonade naturally sweetened, mm -hmm. which was kind of just like lemonade. When I was there, I did notice they had the phony Negroni. Because it's time. a good name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they did have a, a couple of mocktails that, mm. when I went. What about dessert? Oh my gosh, we had um, the panna cotta because we just had to see how do you make panna cotta without dairy. Right. Oh. It was like toasted marshmallows with caramelized honey on it and just like this crunch and softness that was out of this world. Okay. Dessert, Mark? I'm not a big dessert person, but I did get a dessert this time with my friends. We shared the chocolato. Mm -hmm. It's a chocolate ganache, and it's, you know, that right texture of creamy, fluffy, and then there's a little crumble on top, too, for a crunch mm -hmm. in your bite. So just a nice way to end that very comforting, heavy meal. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go out of my way for plant-based right. or for vegan, but I was happy to try something new. And I think there were highs and lows of the meal, but I did enjoy it overall. All right. Would you go back, Deb? Um, I would go back and sit at the bar before show, sort of do the pizza cocktail. All right. Well, if you would like to try Baya, it's located on Grove Street in San Francisco, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $40. Enjoy. Thank you. I like that. Ever since Thomas spent five years working in Canada, he's developed a serious passion for poutine. Luckily now, whenever he's dreaming of those savory gravy and cheese top fries, he just heads to his local pub. Tucked along the scenic Vallejo shoreline, it's Mare Island Brewing Company's Fairy Tap Room. We're the Mare Island Brewing Company. We've been around since 2014, and we are inspired by Mare Island, which is 142 years of naval shipbuilding. We're both winemakers by trade, and actually that's where we come into this industry. We're fermenters at the heart of it. We brew our beer at the Coal Shed Brewery. It's actually one of the original coal sheds on Mare Island that served as the shed that put coal on the Navy ships back in the day when they were coal-powered steam. Ferry Tap is just right across the water from the Coal Shed Brewery, so you can actually see each other from there. We serve about 12 different beers at a time. And all of our beers have a historic basis in their name. We actually go down to the museum and we say, hey, we're making a red ale. What do you got that has to do with red and history of Mare Island? And they give us just dozens of really cool names. We don't have to search very far to come up with incredible heritage. I am the fifth generation of my family to work on Mare Island, so my dad my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my great-great-grandfather all worked on Mare Island when it was a naval shipyard. I would say the perfect pub food is something that makes people want to buy more beer. <laughs> we have
have lots of good starters. We make all of our sauces in-house for the wings. We definitely try to incorporate beer into the food. We use our Shipwrights Porter for our barbecue sauce that we make. We use our Coal Shed Stout for our chocolate pudding. We have some dishes that are really super heavy and you know you want to take a nap afterwards. But we also have menu items that are light and fresh and more seasonal. The fact that I get to cook in my hometown and bring my touch to Vallejo is just a dream come true to me. Beer is really about just this, gathering and being with a good friend of yours and enjoying a pint. It shouldn't be so much about what's in the glass, it's about what the environment you've created. Now, Thomas, this is a craft tap room, yeah. but you don't go for the beers, huh? I don't go for the beers. My friends do. I go for the food. Okay. Um, it's all the kind of comfort food I love. It's poutine. It's not traditional Canadian poutine. Mm -hmm. It's like a loaded fry with gravy on top of it. Just cheese curds and, and gravy, mm -hmm. just a bunch of sausage and meat on it. Yeah. I'm sorry there's a lot of meat. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought about that. And Deb? So I'm not a poutine person because I'm, I'm just not that super into sauces. It's like Canadian nachos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loaded, right? <laughs> Got it. That's fair. Yeah. However, the fries on their own are like rock stars. They were so good we couldn't stop eating them and we were very lucky because they gave us a giant serving. <laughs> So I had the Korean fried chicken sandwich, and it totally elevated a fried chicken sandwich to an entree. The sandwich itself was really fun. Fried chicken, kimchi, barbecue sauce, aioli, and a beautiful bun. I also love the Korean fried chicken sandwich. I'm half Korean and I'm half German, and I feel like that sandwich is half Korean and half German with like chicken <laughs> schnitzel and kimchi. <laughs> it's, it's a sandwich just after my own heart. My go-to there, though, is the Reuben, because as I've gotten older, I've become really weird about traveling, and I only travel for cured meats. So <laughs> it's really great to have a restaurant close to home that has a really good pastrami. And their pastrami sandwich is fantastic. It's on rye with all your traditional toppings of sauerkraut, you know, stone ground mustard, Swiss cheese. And this house-made pastrami that they cut thick, it's not a New York deli portion. This isn't Cat's Deli, but it is, yeah. a, it is a California. Don't talk to me about Cat's. I love that place. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a California-sized portion of pastrami, which it's not too much. It's not too little. It's just the right amount. And it comes with a big pile of fries, too many fries for one person to eat. Uh, my friend really likes it. He gets it when he has the hydraulic sandwich, which is their flagship IPA. He says it's very good. And Mark, what was your experience? Yeah, well, I had an amazing day just getting there because I don't have a car. Ah. So we rode the ferry all the way to Vallejo, which was awesome. Like, I had never ridden the ferry that far, mm -hmm. and the views are really beautiful. And it is a ferry station, so you can really... It's right it's, there. It's very scenic and absolutely... Yeah, it was like a beautiful, warm, sunny day. But by the time we got there, I was craving, like, a lobster roll <laughs> or maybe, like, a shrimp po' boy or a crab louis salad. No seafood on the menu. Nothing. Nothing. So I felt like there weren't a lot of options for the pescatarians out there. There was a delicious mac and cheese, which mm -hmm. is a nice comfort food. Mm -hmm. And it was truffle mac and cheese. And it came out on a wooden board in, in like a cast iron skillet. So that was like a really nice touch. And I had a Chardonnay, which complemented the mac and cheese very nicely. And they also make wine. Yeah. We didn't know they made their own wine. So we went for the beers and they have a, a beer flight. So you can taste a lot of different kinds of beer. And they were delicious. Mm. And then with the beer, we actually had marinated olives. Right. They were a great addition. And they also have a deviled egg with smoked salmon on top. Classic deviled egg, really great egg yolk with relish in it, and then they top it with chives and a smoked salmon. It's, it's one bite. It comes with enough for the table. It's very simple, very delicious. Okay, bring it home, dessert. So they always have a chocolate stout pudding, which is very rich. Ooh. It's very good. Another thing I like about this place is they do seasonal offerings, so seasonal desserts and seasonal entrees. So I've had fish and chips there before. There I'm go. sorry they didn't have it when you were there. <laughs> and one of the reasons I like supporting Mare Island Brewery is because they really celebrate the history of the area. Mm -hmm. And you learn. And it's a, a very historical area. Very area. historical. You learn a lot about Mare Island and they're really doing a lot to invest in the community. Mm -hmm. Vallejo doesn't have a lot. It's, it's not a food destination. We don't have a lot of restaurants that people are clamoring to get to. But they're on the forefront of making it an up-and-coming area for food because they have three locations now mm -hmm. just in our area, which is Awesome. So it was lovely, right, to sit outside and kids are running around. And People brought their dogs. I yeah. got to pet a lot of dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so good atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. If you would like to try Mare Island Brewing Company's Ferry Tap Room, it's located on Mare Island Way in Vallejo, and the average tap per person without drinks is around $25. Deb's restaurant has been her date night destination for more than two decades. 
a carefully curated list of European wines, eclectic Mediterranean plates, served in an intimate yet unstuffy atmosphere, are what bring her back time and time again. Nestled in Oakland's Rockbridge district, it's Akute. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back. Côté is a French word. It means next to. Say no more. When we first started 22 years ago, our whole concept was to gather, to share time, family, friends. <laughs> we made our tables very narrow so that we could get people to really converse together. And it was kind of the start of craft cocktails small plates. We were kind of on the forefront for that in the Bay. I think really what encompasses our food is Mediterranean inspired dishes that are influenced completely by California seasonality. The mussels and the pomfrit, they're always going to be on the menu. It's what we're known for. It's been the signature really from the beginning. Chef Elaine loves just finding new inspiration, researching different countries' cuisines. There's some classic things that you would see, but some things that people probably never heard of before. <laughs> when I go out to eat, I really a lot of times want all the appetizers. So if you like to eat a lot of different kinds of things in one sitting, that's why we're doing what we're doing. We want to share the moment, the food. You don't have to share your wine if you don't want. <laughs> I hope people come here and feel the conviviality, the warmth, and I hope people feel like they're having a fun time when they're here because <laughs> we are fun. Because we're fun. We're fun. <laughs> <laughs> Deb, this place has been around a long time, and that's pretty rare, isn't it? Do they it have a is. secret? It is. I think it's just, um, it's a neighborhood gem. You, you remember Cheers? You feel like you walked in, and you sit at the bar, everybody knows you, but even if you don't know them, you feel like you know everybody right. in there. Right. So for starters, um, although truthfully the menu's just all over the place, you can eat anything at any time, but they do, we do recommend anything from the wood fire domain. They also have a rotating flatbread. So we had one with um, sausage, mm -hmm. very light on the cheese, really delicious crust, and very filling. So what was your experience, Thomas? It was great. It was, it was packed. The parquet mm -hmm. was full outside. Um, the wait staff was very attentive, and we really enjoyed the entree we started with, which was the mussels and frites. Mm -hmm. It was great. We loved it. Very good. We asked for more bread to keep dipping mm -hmm. in the sauce because the sauce was the highlight of the night. Because it's wood fired, right? That's it's a wood oven. Wood fired cooked in a perno sauce. So they feel very rich and creamy. Right. It's very different, very delicious. Mm -hmm. The palm frites, or the french fries, they were very crispy, very great. Mm -hmm. Seasoned well, lots of salt, lots of parsley, um, and they came with just a really great lemon aioli that I could have eaten without the fries. I was about <laughs> to put a spoon into it. It was, it was really good. We also started with the mussels, and they were delicious. There was not a bad mussel in there. You know how sometimes you get a bad mussel? <laughs> yeah. Not a bad mussel in there, and we did not get the fries, okay. but instead the kachapuri bread, which is like the cheesy bread from right. the country from Georgia, of Georgia. Yeah, Georgian cheesy bread with egg. Yes, mm -hmm. with yeah. egg. I mean, that is very, very comforting, and there's plenty of bread there to dip into the mussel sauce, so that's mm -hmm. why we skipped the fries, okay. and it worked out beautifully. It's kind of sacrilegious, I'm not going to say, <laughs> but you know. Don't tell <laughs> but that's a good idea. We didn't actually. get the cheese into the mussel sauce, just the bread. But so the last time we went, we decided to branch out from the mussels and had a pasta with broccoli pesto, and it had a dollop of Italian cheese. That it turns out it's the inside of the burrata. Ah, okay. Oh my gosh, it was mm -hmm. so delicious. Mm -hmm. I had the steelhead salmon, and it was perfectly cooked, pink in the middle, the way you like it, on top of lentils. That was a nice change. You know, a lot of times you get salmon, it's with potatoes and things like that. So I thought the lentils were a nice touch. Anything else for the group? Yeah, we had the chicken piccata, which was very moist. Uh, the chicken was cooked perfectly, and it was on a bed of farro risotto. 
which was very good as well. Mm. Any dessert? <laughs> for dessert, I go for the creme brulee, the beautiful crust and delicious custard underneath. I think what I really liked, though, were the, these almond cookies on the side <laughs> that had like a strawberry marzipan. Mm. So delicious. We shared the coupe acote, mm -hmm. which is the, their namesake dessert. It was very good. It was scoops of chocolate ice cream with a really great toffee sauce on top and brownies on the side. Really sweet, really unctuous. The highlight of the night compared to everything else. It was up there with the muscles. Wow. And in terms of pricing? I thought it was a little overpriced, but I would still go back for the muscles. Yeah, it is a little bit on the pricey side, but it is so consistent and the ingredients are so high quality that it's like, I don't mind doing it for a special night, for a date night. Mm -hmm. And if you go early in the evening, they have a special where you can get the muscles and the fries for a discounted price and it's enough to share. I felt the same. I would definitely go back for the muscles, the kachapuri, sit at the bar. Again, I like the vibes. It passed the vibe check. It was, you know, dimly lit, cozy, very neighborhood feel. So I enjoyed it. And I, I like hanging out in that neighborhood. So I might stop in again. Okay. If you would like to try Akote, it's located on College Avenue in Oakland. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $55. Yeah. And now, reporter Cecilia Phillips brings us more Bay Area bites you've just got to try. She's headed to West Marin, home of the country's oldest cheese company. Cheers. Marin French cheese, we're in a very beautiful spot. What do you all do here? It's a rich history. So we are the country's oldest cheese company. We've operated at this same facility since 1865. All of our cheeses are inspired by traditional French classic cheese recipes, but we're meeting a California vision. All of our cheeses are uniquely influenced by our terroir because you have the really nice warm days, but then the fog that comes in in the morning and at night helps develop the mold and the rind on the cheese. Petit Breakfast is our flagship cheese. We started producing that in the 1800s. We package it only about three to four days after we produce it. And so it's really young. It has a unique springy texture reminiscent of cheese curds. I brought my cooler. You're ready to go, okay. One of the most amazing things about coming to Marin French is to come and have a picnic here, right? Yeah, we have everything here in the shop that you could possibly need for a picnic. Do you want to go mild to strong? Yes. Okay. I always start at the cheese counter, this is our triple then browse for an accompaniment, jams, nuts, dried fruits, all from local producers. And then classic, you can't go wrong with honey. So we have a number of bee boxes here on site, and we're really proud to carry honey that's made here in Marin from Bonnie Bee and Company. We've got a suit for you. Okay. Oh, there's a bug on me already. <laughs> oh, my sake, girl. Hey, you're going to be pretty bulletproof. Student, ready to go. Just about. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to go. <laughs> All right, so is there anything else I should know before we get up close to the bees? Um, don't get stung. Don't break my track record. I do really well with new beekeepers. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're everywhere. Each individual bee only makes a twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in her lifetime. And it takes them two million flowers to make one pound of honey. These workers are all females. Wow, it's so pretty. Yeah, and you can see they're really mellow. They're not even bothered by the fact that we're here. Oh, that is a queen right there. The queen is bigger. That's the queen. Can you see this little bee here? See how she looks a little tiny and fuzzy? Yeah. She was just born today, and you could pet her. Oh, uh, okay. I touched it. You touched a bee. Oh, okay. Speaking of honey, I think we've got to try some of this with cheese. I think we do. Yeah. Bye, bees. Bye, bees. You were a champ. So this is some of your assorted cheeses. Yes. And then you've got your honey here, which is amazing. And you can just drizzle a little bit or a lot. Mm. What do you like to do? I like more. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to give a big thank you to both of you, but then also to the bees. Aww. To the bees. To the bees. <laughs> bees. <laughs> I have to thank my terrific guests on this week's show. Mark Snyder, who introduced us to vegan Italian delights at Baia in San Francisco. 
Thomas Brungart, who pairs his poutine with pristine views at Mare Island Brewing Company's Fairy Tap Room in Vallejo. And Deb Levine, lover of the wood-fired mussels and fries at A Cote in Oakland. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think of the places we featured today? Join the conversation on Instagram and Facebook at KQED Food. Are you ready to tell the world about your favorite restaurant? It's easy to apply to be a guest. Just head to kqed.org slash check, please. Check, please. Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... It's going to my doctor. Without actually going. Graham's Port has been family-owned and operated for over 200 years. Available at vintageandfinewines.com or your local fine wine retailer. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family-owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Aboard Oceana Cruises, our guests savor every moment of the journey. Half of our staff and crew is dedicated to the culinary experience. Our chefs are inspired by the flavors of the world and committed to perfecting fine dining at sea. That's Oceana Cruises. These are truly amazing, and they've been largely unchanged for about 120 million years. And it's a remarkable society, cooperative, taking care of this large colony. What is something that you wish more people knew? Plant more habitat plants, because that helps our bees, and it helps all of our native pollinators. Oh, okay. Bees turn nectar into honey, and as long as moisture airs and getting to it, it'll remain good indefinitely. They've found honey in the tombs of the pharaohs, thousands of years old, that's still edible. I don't know how good it would be, but it's still edible.